The year is 2032. The first manned spacecraft to Mars is already traveling for 260 days. Within a few moments, it will slow down and start to descend towards the surface of the red planet. How on Earth, sorry, Mars, will our astronaut be able to survive the hostile conditions on this planet? With reduced speed, the spacecraft is now slowly moving towards an unknown area marked for the landing. Only a few more meters and a subtle bump and, whoops, landing got fucked. Spacecraft got fucked, plan B to Z pretty much fucked. You are stranded on Mars. Bonjour, hola, herzlich willkommen. Now what are you going to do? Don't feel too bad yet. You just achieved the unthinkable. You are the first person who made it alive to Mars and the first person who is now 110 million kilometers away from Meghan Markle. So, not all bad news. Now, get moving from the spacecraft and start to scan the area around you. Your first hours on Mars are crucial. You need to build a shelter quickly in order to protect yourself from multiple elements. First, Mars has a very different atmospheric density than Earth, in the sense of almost none. It has oxygen levels that are just a fraction, because compared to Earth, its atmosphere is 100 times thinner. You would suffocate pretty much right away without any oxygen supply. Radiation levels are very high. You don't want to start your first Mars day with cancer. That can be such a trip spoiler. The suit you are wearing protects you from a lot of things, including pressuring the air within it to keep your organs in place, which is very pleasant. However, besides your spacesuit, you're still going to need more protection. Time to start building your space crib. Luckily, NASA sent you a container with a shitload of stuff and an IKEA-looking instruction manual. After a few days, a few bruised thumbs and lots of swearing, you're done. At least, almost. Close to the equator of Mars, the temperature can get around 20 degrees centigrade. That sounds quite comfy, until you realize that the night temperatures can drop to minus 100 degrees centigrade. Yikes! Good thing you brought some nuclear reactors with you for heating, to go along with your hot cup of cocoa. Besides the nuclear reactors, it might also be a good idea to start constructing solar panels. The efficiency of the panels will be much lower than those back on Earth, due to the distance of the sun. However, you will need a secondary energy source to supply your base for a longer period. You've just built yourself a cozy little shelter, and you've done some decoration, a warm bed, some other furniture, lots of books to read, and above all, a massive amount of porn to uh, also read. It's all getting a bit more complex from now on. Eventually, besides porn, we will need fresh oxygen. Good thing it is 2032 and some wonderful science guys developed a plasma reactor that splits Mars's atmospheric carbon dioxide into oxygen. No joke, this is already being researched and it's called a moxibox. Cute name for a plasma reactor, <laughs> just saying. After a good night rest and some early morning lunges in your bedroom filled with fresh oxygen, it's time to start the next important task, finding water. Very nice, you brought a lot of supplies, but obviously you're going to run out of those eventually, so finding a water source will be key to long-term survival here. One slightly annoying side note, Mars does not have any water on the surface, so some hard labor will be required to get to it. That was the hard labor part, now we can just sit and wait. Maybe enjoy a bit of the nice view, right? You are on Mars, so, or is it just Utah? Let's check. Oh yeah, it's Mars. After a few hours of drilling and chilling, the machine indicates you have struck liquid water. Eureka! Now the time has come to start working on the greenhouse. With a water source close by, we can start to grow plants and produce our own food. The ultimate vegan dream. Too bad our guy favors KFC. If you want your menu card to be slightly more interesting, we can build ourselves a fish tank, fill it up with water, and put a few fishes in there we brought all the way from Earth. After a few days of construction, we have built our greenhouse with fish tank. Let's start to connect our water source to the rest of our base. With a series of pipes, we can pump the water to our greenhouse and our little Mars home. Nice to have a cup of tea every morning with your daily Mars newspaper. After finishing the newspaper and your tea, it's time to do a good old interstellar number two. You have produced a good big pile of shit by now, so time has come to start fertilizing your greenhouse. After a long wait, you see the first green leaf, Another job well done. You are growing more and more plants by now, and after another good night's sleep, you get up and see that all your plants are dead. Uh, confusion? You have done everything right. Or have you? Is it a problem with the temperature or the soil? Or maybe it's the tiny detail that Mars has so much radiation that you would do a better job starting a greenhouse on top of the number four reactor at fucking Chernobyl. 
You know what? Maybe that's it. Too bad for the shiny glass dome. Pretty useless, it turns out. If we want to have anything growing inside this thing, we will probably need to add a shitload of grow lights that makes our greenhouse look more like Bob Marley's backyard, but then covered with 20 tons of dirt. Very romantic. And those nice big windows in your cute little Mars house? Forget it. You've received way too much radiation already, so prepare for the ultimate bunker experience. Sorry, fishes, you are screwed too. I guess the whole going to Mars and what a good time that can be is becoming less fun by the day now. Going outside for a walk occasionally might do you some good, perhaps a bit of PT even, until you start to feel dizzy and become a bit, well, not so well. Obviously, a spacesuit is not going to protect you from the same radiation. Maybe if you wear a suit made from five tons of dirt, but probably tricky to move around like that. So you're basically safe in your newly renovated bunker. You can make underground tunnels to your greenhouse and other parts of your base. Drones can be used to move and explore the areas around. All the fieldwork can still be done without too much interference. But for the rest, you have become pretty much a prisoner in your own base. You can only watch outside by looking at camera screens. Even most prisoners on Earth have at least one window in their cell to peek outside from time to time. You are slowly but surely starting to feel the effects of long-term isolation. You have had enough and decide to call home and complain. Every message you send back to Earth takes more than 20 minutes to get there. It will take another 20 minutes for a response message to reach you. So it's basically the same as the average Tinder conversation. Very spontaneous. You call and say, hey Earth, long time of nothing. Hey Mars, this sucks. What sucks? Everything. How sad. If you can prepare your bags, we will have a ride ready to pick you up in 260 days. You already spent 260 days in a spacecraft on your way here, fantasizing about Mars, only to have that fantasy ruined by enduring brutal conditions for months. Now, you will have to survive another 260 days pretty much feeling like a depressed, overaged lab rat in a container, and your ride back home will take you another 260 days of waiting. But somehow, you are resilient as hell and managed to endure all the extremes Mars has thrown at you, survived more than 520 days of space travel, and are finally shooting back into Earth's atmosphere. Your eyes are still adjusting to the bright sunlight, and with two feet on the ground, your body instantly collapses due to gravity. On top of that, you have difficulty communicating without 20 minutes intervals. The only thought you have at the moment is why you left Earth in the first place. You have become pretty much the first alien from Mars to visit Earth. Welcome. Join our community on Patreon. Every month, we publish new and exclusive content. Check out our Patreon and become a member today.